All right, so uh, welcome everybody to Chi Talk. Today we're going to talk about how to absorb energy from nature. How, if you're fatigued and you don't feel like you have enough energy, is there a way that we can tap into outside resources for more energy? <laughs> this is, uh, my name is Eli Cohen, a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. And I've been teaching uh, Qigong and uh, healing energy for over 10 years. And I'd like to uh, start this platform of Qi Talks as a way to kind of uh, talk about different topics and introduce, uh, introduce different topics uh, about self-healing. And this, uh, this uh, video is going to be transcribed into the podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. So, uh, so yes, very interesting topic and a very uh, known uh, ancient Qigong practice of uh, tapping the energy of the universe. Uh, there's so much energy around you, so much energy of the ocean, of the wave, of the sun, uh, a lot of energy. And we're like, are we disconnected from this energy? How can we tap into it? That's the topic of the day. So, uh, and... I'll bring some more topics because of kind of just introducing it. So let's start with a little bit meditation. Thank you all for joining me. It's really, really good to see you. Really appreciating uh, all your beautiful faces here. <laughs> just wanted to say that. So uh, let's, uh, let's close our eyes and uh, kind of tap into our own energy. So if you will, just close your eyes. And then when you close your eyes, just feel your body. the form and shape of your body. And there's a train just, just passed by. <laughs> uh, and as you feel the form and shape of your body, put attention to the feet and the sit bones touching of the floor and the earth. And this is really our first connection with the energy of the earth in this meditation. There's a reason why, as we start meditating, meditation, we are tapping into the energy of the earth. We're feeling our feet, feeling our sit bones, feeling the, the earth beneath us holding us. Feeling the pressure that your, your sit bones put on the chair, <clears throat> your legs putting on the floor. And give way to gravity. So instead of holding yourself up, see if you can let the earth hold you. So instead of holding yourself up, you're feeling like you're being held, supported, so you can rest and expand that point of contact with the floor as a way to gain more support and more of this holding. Relax your heart to the earth. Relax your mind to the earth. <clears throat> and your attention to the earth beneath you. In a welcoming way. Welcoming the support of the earth. How does it feel to melt into it, to surrender into it, and to trust it? And also move your mind, move your attention as you can move your attention to the feet. When I say move your attention to the feet, you can feel your feet. Can you move your attention into the earth? So a little bit outside of your body. And to the depth of the earth, maybe a few feet down. And as you are moving your attention outside of your body into the earth, 
see if the breath can be when you breathe in you can breathe in the earth upwards and exhale back down to the earth so as you breathe in the earth giving you the energy up to your body and as you breathe out it's almost like you're cleansing and clearing the body back into the earth and see if incrementally you can go deeper with each breath you're going few feet deeper into the earth that place that you're focusing on getting the air from and feel the connection between the earth and your body and be grateful for the earth connect with the earth with your heart and, and thank the earth for supporting you and thank the earth for giving you allowing you to exchange energy with the earth And maybe see if you feel any difference. What is this earth energy breathing? Does it feel warm? Does it feel more cool? What does it make you feel? What is it? What is the uh, effects of it? Emotionally, maybe physically, maybe. Stay in the depth of the earth there. And breathe up to the body. Be curious about the effects of it. Okay, so let's uh, finish this meditation by bringing our attention back into our, in, back to our body, just fully engage with the form and shape of your body. And from the center of your brain, Open your eyes. Good. That was really good. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, this is a very powerful meditation. This is one of the first steps of um, how to connect with the energy of the universe. We always start in Qigong with the earth. Uh, because the earth gives us, so it's very interesting before we kind of begin about how to absorb energy from, from, different, from the universe. Well, we already did it. So, <laughs> uh, and, and really uh, it's very interesting because in Qigong uh, teachings and uh, it's, it's actually a written text, there's different energies that we can get from different, from different uh, sources. So there's if you want certain type of energy, you go to the earth. If you want a different type of energy, you go to the ocean or to a body of water. From the sun, you get different energy. From the trees, you get totally different energy. It goes to so much detail 
that they actually specify the type of tree and what type of tree gives what energy. And they also go into specification of what tree or what plant is more generous in its chi than others. <laughs> so it's known that pine trees are very generous. <laughs> and uh, buckeye trees are not really generous with their energy. So, uh, so everything has its own consciousness and plants has consciousness and the earth has its own consciousness. So, so the shamanic practices, you know, Taoist, Taoism and uh, uh, got birth from, you know, from Buddhism and Taoism came from shamanism. So uh, there's a lot of shamans. And so the Chinese medicine is really a, a based a lot in shamanic practices you know from witchcraft <laughs> mm. uh so people that have higher sensitivity and over the years and all this stuff we are so fortunate that all of this stuff got documented and we could read about it and that's the job of the yellow emperor <laughs> the yellow emperor decided hey let's document all of this all of these findings down in in in, in books so for generations, so people can read it in case we lose them. And that's uh, a, the very famous, and this is how Chinese medicine is still available, just because of the work of the Yellow Emperor. The Yellow Emperor put it in, uh, in books. Uh, there's many, many volumes, like over thousands book, and each one of them is very thick. So it's a, a lot of information. It was like a, a huge amount of work. So it's, that's very interesting to know. Um, so the first step in connecting with, with the energy is, uh, is what we did, is really, is, uh, first of all, being curious about, about the surrounding, being curious about, you know, looking. Uh, you know, a lot of time I, uh, I, I you know, I, I love to walk in nature. A lot of people, I see people jogging or doing and keep, but when you want to absorb energy, when you want to heal, uh, you want to exchange energy, you have to make a connection, a loving, a supporting and a curious connection. It's like with anything. So, um, and it's very, uh, it's very known in Taoist tradition, Chinese medicine, also medical Qigong that uh, if people, if, if, you want, if, if you want people to heal, you tell them, you know, walk, walk in nature. I know that my mother healed his, herself back in the days from a grief over my father's death by walking. She was walking a, 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 an hour every day. And she said that that's what healed her. And so by walking in nature, uh, a lot of time, you know, we, we, we are absorbing the energy, so we don't need to do anything specific, but in Qigong, we say, if you want to amplify that energy, there's a, there's a way to do it. There's, first of all, is to connect, to, to look at nature, to connect with it, to be curious about it. So curiosity is a very, very powerful, um, powerful tool that we all forgot, forgotten because we have such a short expen uh, uh, attention span today because of uh, social media and, uh, and people cannot read books anymore. There's no, <laughs> there's no patient, no, uh, and, and people get bored a lot. The problem of, of being bored, of boredom, is lack of curiosity. Because really, think about it. You can look at the leaf of a tree for an hour and wondering about all kinds of things within it. So curiosity is one of the most powerful tools to absorb energy. So you, we have to tune ourselves into nature in order, to, in order to exchange energy. So it's not so much, you know, I, I did write in the email how to absorb energy from nature, but it's really about how to exchange energy with nature. Because you cannot get energy without giving energy. <laughs> and what you give is your attention, is your curiosity, and is your, is your love and appreciation. 
And this is how we exchange energy with anybody, <laughs> you know, with a friend. <clears throat> if there's a stranger passing by and we didn't say hi, we probably won't exchange energy with, with them as much as we exchange energy with a friend that we are engaging with and talking to and, and kind of feeling for even. You know, we know that people that are very empathetic, empath empaths, they take energy from other people. There's a way to, to not do that if you want to, too. But the way to uh, exchange energy with nature is to feel the same thing, is to feel the love for nature, is to appreciate the ocean, is to appreciate the trees, is to wake up in the morning and appreciate the color of the sky and the, the fact that there's a blue sky. So a lot of times we get, uh, yeah, so we need, like I just went to Costa Rica for vacation. <laughs> and a lot of time, in, we need a vacation to notice that we, we need to see different things, right? <laughs> Sometimes you, and then you say, hey, I love Costa Rica. It was so beautiful. Maybe I'll move there. And then you move there it's, and then the vacation ends. It's not so exciting anymore. <laughs> and same thing here. Like, how do we engage with, how do we keep the freshness of our awe? of our curiosity, of our gratitude? How do we keep the freshness? How to stay in a vacation place all the time and feeling that you're still on vacation? <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, it's by, by cultivating this uh, type of energy, we call it curi curiosity, awe, and appreciation. And so by, by, by really, working on this, we can see new things. Yeah, it was very interesting to me how, you know, we took in Costa Rica, we took these guides that they know where the animals, they know how to look for animals to see these different <laughs> tropical animals. So we took a tour guide and they're very keen into, into seeing animals and we, we couldn't have seen it otherwise. But it's very interesting because I started to and it, it is it is the it is the process of of looking and 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 absorbing the energy absorbing what you see and 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 these people trained themselves for years to look you know this this guy was like spotted like this howler monkey that is so far away and it was almost dark be be and behind the trees I, in in seconds and he was just like we were walking and he's like oh here it is <laughs> i'm like what how could you see it he told me well i'm doing it for 30 years but uh it's amazing uh so so curiosity and to 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 look for things to appreciate things to uh this is uh this is how we connect with the with energy, how do we absorb energy or exchange energy with nature? And this is a major factor in healing energy, major. Like this in medical Qigong, this is a big, a, a, you know, walking in nature, absorbing the energy, exchanging energy with nature is part, is a, a crucial part of healing. It's, 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 a, it's a prescription, part of, part of a Qigong practice. And there's no really good or bad energy, you know? And some people tell me like, well, I live in the city. <laughs> I'm like, walk in the city, it's the same. There's, there's great energy. You know, a lot of times, that, that's a whole different subject. And maybe we'll talk about it another time. Because sometimes people think, you know, the, the energy of the city, like I live in New York City and it's so busy and, uh, and is, is this good energy? Like the, the, you know, you have a lot of cars and, and a lot of loud voices. It's not nice. I mean, personally, I don't like it, but, <laughs> but there's people that live off of that, right? There's people that they cannot be in nature. They're, they need that, that, that busyness. So they're, they're living their energy. They're supporting their energy from that urban jungle. And it is a jungle, kind of like the Costa Rican jungle. It's just different, <laughs> different. So, is there what? What could you? So, is there good energy or bad energy? There's no good or bad energy. Energy is energy, and and abundant of energy, abundant of of traffic, abundant of. It's also energy. 
your the fact that people respond to energy differently that's a, a different subject so and and you respond to it instinct instinctively you know so uh so for you maybe uh, living in a busy city is a uh, is is not a good thing for other people it is uh but it but you have to know that you can shift that that uh consciously you can shift that you can absorb energy from the environment wherever you are um so that's a little bit about absorbing energy from nature and it starts with tuning ourself in with cultivating the energy of curiosity of gratitude of appreciation uh and uh, and that's that's uh and and there's different uh, let, why we started with the ground first before we, we before i open it to just sharing uh we started with the earth because from the earth we get um uh, we get we, we heal the heart we heal the heart from the earth actually the frequency of the earth 7.83 hertz that's the frequency of the, the beating of the earth is the same beating of a calm, healthy heart. So where are you in a stress? You, and that grounding practice that we just did calms the heart. So it's, it's releasing stress. So if you stress out, your energy rise up to the head and you want to lower it down to the floor, to the ground, and that would bring you that would uh, release stress. So that's, well, that's why connecting with the earth is the first step before connecting to the heaven, connecting to the uh, ocean, connecting to the trees is connecting to the earth. It's very good for the heart. Uh, there's people that I worked with that actually measure the heart, the heart variability during this meditation. And it went, <laughs> and finally it went to be a healthy heartbeat when, when they did this meditation, really after two minutes, it was pretty remarkable. All right, let's open it up. Just if you have any uh, anything to say, question. Hey, Carla, good to see you. Yeah, go ahead. Hi there. Hi, Ellie. Um, I just had a question because I a, a chi talk from before. I remember you saying that if you go back to in the in the circle of the elements of the seasons, then you find the healer for the for the element you're on. So I'm trying to figure that out because you said the heart is healed by the earth, but um the heart is the fire element right fire, yeah but the earth follows that in the yearly cycle so i don't know can you say something about how is the heart healed by the earth uh not by the earth sorry so that's uh so the control there's a controlling cycle as a, a mother a grandmother yeah so yeah if you go backwards it's actually you go backwards from the heart the spring is the liver and that's the wood and then and then actually the the heart controlled by water by the kidney right. so the water heals the heart right yeah, yeah. Okay. but you said the earth did that it's the same hurts so i just i'm so interested earth. and I, feel, I can feel that really that the earth is so healing oh now yeah of course yeah the ground grounding yeah the 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 energy of grounding yeah, that's that's uh, that that is healing uh, the the uh, the heart. So the heart is fire. Yeah. You know, in the in the old, there's two there's two there's the modern Ch the Chinese medicine there's the classic uh, Chinese medicine that we don't use where the earth is not an element. It's just sitting in the middle, and we oh. have only four elements. And then there's the modern traditional Chinese medicine where there's five elements. So you can you can uh, argue that that the earth is the is is not an element like the other element, but it's the it's it's the center. Uh, the thing that is strong about earth energy is that uh, it's providing groundness. And a lot of time when we the heart is like anxiety or um, over excitement, also excitement in Chinese medicine is seen as heart imbalance. So if you're like dancing all night <laughs> you know very excited you're gonna burn we call it burnout because <laughs> yeah, it's too yeah. much fire you burn out so the burnout so the so grounding 
yeah, the water, sleep is water, but also grounding, the earth is also uh, grounding the, the heart, grounding the fire. So you put, you put fire on the earth, it's fine. You put fire on the roof, you burn your house. So you want, <laughs> so I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, the, the, the earth is, is uh, something that pulls everything together. It's the, it's the energy that pulls everything together. And the energy that we get from the earth is confidence, uh, is power, is strength, like physical strength and uh, calmness, you know, and again, uh, more self-confidence. Um, and so the earth heals everything basically, cause it's at the center. It's a healer for everything. Really. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Thank you. That's yes. beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's great. And uh, of course there's imbalances with too much earth energy. There's, we don't, we won't talk about it. It's a little bit too much medical medical information for for this <laughs> you're welcome thank you for thank you for sharing and 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 uh, and asking anybody else hey bart yeah go ahead hello um during the meditation i noticed that when i put my attention on the feet and the sitting bones and then go deeper into the earth it's i can do that but when i first run my attention in my heart, then it goes much easier. Mm. I don't know how, why that is, but I noticed it when I put my attention in my heart, I, I immediately get much more calmer and then I go deeper into the earth much easier. I oh. don't know if that's only my experience or the other ones. Uh, yeah anybody else shared similar experience go yeah carla yeah i just i want to share i heard a native american teacher she's a cherokee teacher and she says our heart and the heart of the earth is one one heart mm -hmm. so that per makes perfect sense bart what you said if you tune into your heart then the earth is easy easy to mm -hmm. tune in mm -hmm. And uh, it's also the so yeah work with it. I mean this is great if you if you like uh, this type of like going from the heart into the earth. That's that's beautiful. It, there is a very strong connection between the heart and the earth. So um, thank you for sharing. Uh, anybody else wants to share maybe about their experience about this meditation? I wonder if you felt like warmth or or coolness during the meditation some people felt like did you feel like sleepy or what what else you can share about this anybody no <laughs> yeah claudia go ahead so um in my meditation and it happens every time we do this go deep down into the earth like 100 miles or more mm -hmm. is i actually meditate on a gurgling stream down there there's water in the center of the earth so then while my body felt warm or just kind of a neutral temperature when I then bring the earth energy up to my heart then it's cooling down the heart hmm. I actually envision it as water I don't know you know that there's water deep in the earth and it's a stream and you know so there is yeah <laughs> yes there is the the water element in the center of the earth for sure yeah, yeah warm also yeah. so thank you this is beautiful uh it's interesting that you all had the strong connection of the heart with the earth with this meditation really is is really all about that so it's uh yeah rebecca go ahead last sharing <laughs> What you were saying, it really reminded me, I don't know if um, you know this book, um, Assuming the Ecosexual Position, the Earth as Lover. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Beth Stevens. Um, they're, they're local uh, lesbian couple here in the, in the Bay in Santa Cruz. And uh, I just love um, when you said the way that we, um, you know, exchange energy with the Earth is the same way that we would with anyone, um, which is with appreciation and with gratitude and with curiosity. 
Um, and I love seeing that, you know, extension and like other people are relating it to indigenous wisdom, just like that we are, we are in relationship with everyone and everyone is our, is our relative. And so if we want to get to know a tree, it's the same as if we want to get to know anyone, um, and using those same skills of appreciation, gratitude and curiosity and awe. So uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting. And um, yeah, if anyone is, is curious about being ecosexual, there's some great <laughs> workshops that they're doing of just going to a body of water and saying, I love you. And just that kind of expressing that care and love. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for highlighting this uh, piece of the talk that uh, of being uh, connecting with, uh, and this is why I, I talked about different trees uh, being you know, some trees are more stingy with their energy. Some, and, you know, and, and all this information got developed because people were really connecting with the elements in a very personal, uh, interpersonal way uh, and asking questions even. You know, it goes deeper into really uh, uh, connecting with elements, with outside elements of us as, as being. They're not human beings, but they're beings, <laughs> and they have their own consciousness. And uh, and and we could we could uh, we could connect with them. So thank you for highlighting that 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 place. And and curiosity is one of the biggest uh, the biggest energy. Curiosity and gratitude, appreciation, but curiosity is very very powerful. And just think uh, about. And the opposite of curiosity is judgment, by the way. And uh, think about how many times we judge before we, we and, and can we shift into curiosity? Just even talking with a person, you know, how can we be more open and, and curious and we will have a new experience. When we, when we develop curiosity within us, not only to nature but to people that we we already know uh, we will have new experience we will come a little clearer and if you want to expand we curiosity is really a really powerful tool and curiosity that energy connects with the kidney with the water element yeah by curiosity we can go deeper into yeah curiosity the children are curious and look how much they absorb. Children learn a lot, yeah, just by being curious and open, bored. So uh, we want to be kind of like children and uh, trans transform judgment into curiosity. And notice when you are judging or when you, and you can shift it to curiosity. And uh, yeah, that's a good practice. <laughs> All right, well, let's close it with a little bit of meditation, a short one this time. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. It was really fun to talk and take this maybe as a way to as a way for practice today, for this week. <laughs> uh, let's close our eyes and connect with uh, with our body. Feeling the form and shape of your body as you're sitting here. And let's connect with, uh, with the heaven above us. So mind the space above your head. and above the ceiling of your room. And it, although this meditation will be a little shorter than the earth meditation, go up to the sky with your attention. And be curious about the energy above you. feel that you could breathe in heaven 
into your body. With each breath, the light in your body, be the body become lighter and lighter. And from heaven, we get uh, energy of curiosity, of inspiration, of freedom of liberation from patterns. Breathe the freedom from the sky into your heart. Feel uplifted and light as you exchange this energy from a higher frequency This energy from a higher frequency allows us to project into our life, to see ourselves from above. Like a bird looking down in the landscape. Blessing comes from heaven as well. You can visualize that inhalation being like a, a waterfall of blessing energy, good health, intuition, freedom and creativity. Nice, and let's, as we finish, especially a meditation that goes from above, from the heavens, we are putting our hands on the lower abdomen. We, let's finish it by grounding ourselves in our belly. So as you put the hands on the navel, you bring your attention to the space between the navel and the spine. And from here, you can thank the energy of the sky, the energy of this beautiful energy for exchanging energy with you. Acknowledging the earth, acknowledging heaven. And we are between heaven and earth. Nice. So from here, let's open the hands and open the eyes. Thank you guys so much. All right. Go for a walk, exchange energy with nature. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me. Really, really fun to be back and to kind of uh, start again. She uh, talks. Uh, I'll see you next week. Thank Bye. you so much. Great to see you home. Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Sally. Great Thank you, to be Randy. back. Thank you. Thank you. Toda. Toda. Toda.